Welcome back to AZ Astro. So, as you can see, I've got a different mount, or I've got a different telescope on my mount. Uh, this is a 19, I believe, 78 Celestron C8 orange tube. I got it off eBay for 250 bucks. I couldn't pass that up. I bought it uh, about two months ago. The corrector plate on the inside was all hazy and everything. Guy didn't know how to fix it. Didn't want to deal with it anymore, so he sold it to me for 250 bucks. Uh, and I just basically took off the corrector plate and got some lens wipes, cleaned it up, and now it's all clear. Uh, great investment that I made. Uh, I struggled with getting it collimated correctly for several weeks, only to find out that I was trying to collimate it through the Celestron corrector and reducer. I'm assuming that was the issue because I could never get it collimated properly. And then about four or five nights ago, I took off the, the, the corrector and reducer and everything, stuck my camera straight into the back, put a tri batten off mask on the front, and now I got it perfectly collimated and I'm getting pinpoint stars. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, so tonight I have been, I will be working on M27, the Dumbbell Nebula. I've been working on that for four, four nights now. Quit digging. Quit digging. I don't need to break my, my neck in one of your holes. No digging there in my telescope. So I've been imaging it for about four days now. And I'm getting about six hours each night. So I'm hoping for a really, really good image. Uh, the last time I went after the Dumbbell Nebula was three years ago when I first started my channel. And the best telescope I had at that point was my Skywatcher Evostar 100ED, which was a doublet. I, I don't know if it was the telescope itself or if I just got a bad telescope, but it was a garbage telescope. So I... And it didn't bring in M27 very close at all. So I'm hoping, or actually I know because I've been imaging for four days now, this C8 brings that M27 Dumbbell Nebula just right up there in the frame. And it looks really good. I've been imaging in Hydrogen Alpha and Oxygen 3. So I'm going to do one more night of that. And then I'll get that video out as soon as that's done. I'm going... This weekend to go camping, I'm going to take my Hyperstar and my Ioptron GEM 28EC out there. I don't know what I'm going to image yet, but that will be another video for you guys, assuming that it doesn't cloud out and assuming that I'm actually able to do that. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about, about this Dumbbell Nebula because I've never had it this close because the C8 gives me a focal length of... I think it was 1,250 millimeters at f6.3. I mean, that's that's just crazy. So I'm I really really have high hopes for that. So I will see you guys at the computer. All right, so we are back. Uh, man, this every time I look at this, this just makes me excited. Uh, as you can see, it's been imaging for quite a while. Uh, this is image five of twelve for oxygen three. And in my sequencer, I did 12 of the hydrogen alpha and then 12 of the oxygen 3, and then I just copied it two more times. I do that because if something goes wrong through the night, let's say in like two hours the telescope stops working for whatever reason, uh, that solidifies that I have at least a few images through both HA and O3. So instead of just doing like, let's say you know, 24 HA and then 24 oxygen 3 and calling it a night. If something goes wrong, you know, three hours into the imaging session, well, I'm I'm missing all my oxygen 3 and I'm only stuck with hydrogen alpha. So that's kind of the reason why I do that. But this is oxygen 3. Like, I didn't, I, I'm, every time I see this, I'm not used to seeing so much data in oxygen 3 like that is just a ton of data in oxygen 3 so let's see if we can look at a hydrogen alpha here's a hydrogen alpha all 
I mean, look at that. That's the hydrogen alpha. Seems to be a little bit clearer. I'm not quite sure what that band right there is for. But I'm not too worried about it. It's just one frame. Like, here's more hydrogen alpha. Like, that is so good. Like, I, I can't wait to see what this picture comes out as. But the crazy thing is I've been, I've been going for uh, about four nights now. And if you look at the oh, images, sorry about that. I couldn't find my images. Well, it turns out I switched the folder to my desktop. So if I minimize this and I minimize that, images should be in here. And yep, there they are, M27. And I don't, I'm not too fond of how it puts it in different folders like this, depending on the temperature. I, I don't care if it ranges a half a degree or not. I wish they would all just go into one folder, but whatever. But at zero degrees, you can see, I mean, a whole folder just filled with hydrogen alphas and oxygen threes. There's 97 files just in here. And then right here, there's another 76. Here's another 18, and here's another 54. So, I mean, that's that's got to be over 200. I believe that's over 200 pictures. And I have still got... And I've still got four more, four more to go. So by the time this is done, I should be sitting at like 150 images. So I, I'm pretty sure that this is the longest uh, exposure time that I have spent on a target. Because I started imaging this Sunday night, and it's now Wednesday night. So, so this is my fourth night of, of imaging this. So yeah, this would be the longest... It, yeah, this, this would be the longest exposure time that I have spent on a single target. So I am really excited to see how this comes out. So I will see you guys a little bit later when this goes on a little bit more. I'm going to talk a little bit about the nebula itself. So I'll see you guys later. All right, so a little bit of information about the Dumbbell Nebula. Uh, it's also known as the Apple Core Nebula or Messier 27. It's a planetary nebula, and it's in the constellation Volpecula. I'm uh, not too familiar with that constellation, although I don't really, I don't know most of the constellation constellations because that's not something that I really get into. But it sits at a distance of 1,360 light years away from Earth. Uh, it was first discovered, obviously, by Charles Messier, so Messier 27. And he discovered it in seven in 1764. It has a visual magnitude of 7.5 and an eight arc minute diameter. I mean that is crazy. Uh, so my telescope, I'm I'm sitting at 1,260 millimeter focal length, and this, I mean, I've I've never seen the Dumbbell Nebula fill up, fill the screen. I uh, quite like this quite like this this is the closest that I've gotten to the Dumbbell Nebula I uh, it, it really really excites me because I'm not I'm, I'm not used to being that close the last image give me just a second and I'll show you the last one that I got of the Dumbbell Nebula which was about three years ago and right here, this is the Hubble palette that I imaged it in. I mean, that's not too terribly... That's not much larger. I believe this one, if I remember correctly, was taken through uh, my Skywatcher... Not East... Uh, Evo Star 100 ED. Which, yeah, I'm pretty sure, because you can see, like... Just the nasty halos around these stars. 
that's definitely the 100 ED. But yeah, I mean, you can see just from this older image right here, just how much nicer this image is going to be. I am really excited. I'm also going to uh, process this as red and blue, which is the colors it's supposed to be. I've never been a big fan of this yellow in here that the Hubble palette leaves, so I've never really uh, liked doing the Hubble palette. I like more natural colors. I know a lot of people like to do the Hubble palette because they get these nice yellows and greens. Like there's the uh, M20 right here that I imaged a while ago that just came out all yellow. I don't really think that looks that good, you know? So I'm not a big fan of the Hubble palette. I prefer the HOO palette because I think that comes out the best. Like for instance, uh, the Helix Nebula, this is HOO. Now this isn't a very good picture because I was dealing with a lot of uh, background noise it didn't come out very well, but you can see with the HOO palette, you get your nice reds around the nebula, and then you get these deep uh, blues, almost greens in here. Now, if I were to reprocess this, I think I would probably do uh, closer to a blue in here because this is a little bit more green than I like. But that's my goal with this image. I'm going to stack it. I'm going to try to do blue and red and make it as close to actual true to life as I can. Uh, I might do a time lapse of me processing it again. I don't know, we'll just see how it goes. Uh, I won't be processing it until I get back from my camping trip. So when I get back from my camping trip, I will see you guys later.